Hi there. This video is going to talk about how to create this type of uh, workflow where everything is vectorized. The edges of the objects, the pattern fill, and the shading are all vector objects. I see three main advantages to vectorized drawings. Um, some have been discussed previously, but they are. Firstly, everything is cohesive. If you have multiple um, pixel-based raster images in your composition and you try and blend them together, they may or they would likely have different resolutions, they'll likely have different compression levels, and it's just not going to look like what they're cut of the same cloth. So when you have vectors, everything is the same sharpness, it's infinite sharpness. That brings me on to the, ne the next advantage, is that vector drawings can be scaled up and down infinitely and they will always be perfectly sharp. The last advantage, which is probably uh, really the nail in the coffin, is that they are they become fills. And when you have a fill, such as this object here, which is a shadow, um, they can be changed. At the moment, I have a pattern on it. This is just a line pattern. It's vectorized. And that can be rotated. That can be changed in thickness. You can do whatever you want, as you normally would with a standard fill and you can add an edge, you can make a gradient, you can do whatever you want. So those are the three advantages I see to vectorized images and I was trying to find a workload where I could get the shadows vectorized from Rhino and now I've found it. So now if I go over into Rhino, Rhino 7, I'll show you how I set up that scene or that image. I've got two um, platonic geometries, a a sphere and this sort of elongated rectangle, uh, cube, elongated cube, and they're both volumes. Uh, this is the viewport that I'll be capturing both for the Make 2D and the raster exports. So I go to rendered mode and in display options, um, I just don't, a couple of things I want to note is that I don't want to have any sort of lines around the edges of this um, objects. So I just sort of turn off curves if there are any in the, in the image. Um, and objects, doesn't really matter for this. It's uh, more the shadows that we're looking at here. The shadow, I want to have sharp shadows. So the way to do that is to put the edge blurring down to no blurring. And that keeps things as, as sharp as they can. If I turn that up, you can see how things are starting to blur. So I'm just going to keep it at no blurring and self-shadowing artifacts. It just play around with it so you have some sharp shadows. It's pretty simple. The next thing I'm going to show you is that this shade is caused by the sun. It could also be caused by a rectangular light um, in, in the Rhino rendered mode, not in ray trace, but in Rhino render, you'll still get the same sharp shadows. Um, and the last thing is to turn off the skylight because the skylight turns the shading instead of it being one color it'll be multiple different shades of gray so um, turn that off and now we have just pure black but you can see that the object here is um, there's a gradient between the object and the shadow and I sort of want to eliminate that so it's as crisp as possible um, and the best way I found to do that is to go to the Sun and turn the intensity up it could also be the rectangular light in Rhino 6 but I'm gonna put this at hundred and you can see what happens is that um, the the shade becomes very crisp. Now, there's two ways that I can export the shadows. I could export them as one block object like this, and then I would overlay that on top of the Make 2D. The other way I could do it is to separate the shadows. So I'm gonna show you quickly how to do both. Firstly, I'm gonna um, export just the uh, single block object. It's an A3 portrait, 450 dpi at a scale of 1 to 2 or whatever fits within that A3 page and you remember it for the Make 2D export as well. So I print that. Um, I've already done some as a test so I'm just going to print as number 2 and I'm also now going to do a Make 2D. So I have an alias M2. That's Make 2D for me. Press OK. From the top view, ZS and then File, export selected, um, desktop, new folder, 
export as illustrator. I'm going to put as number eight. The save two millimeters in the model equals one millimeter in the drawing that's been output. Open up number eight. Group them. Bring that across. Create a new layer underneath. And I believe it was number two. Drag that in. Yep. It's looking very crisp. Very nice and crisp. That there looks good. Now we go image trace silhouettes. And I'm going to go to the menu option, change this to 128, that's halfway in the middle. I'm going to turn the paths up and the corners up. And I'm going to save this as a preset. Call it 128. I'm going to expand. There we go. I have to, re I have to shift this across just a little bit because it lost alignment there. But you can see our vectorized shapes are looking pretty good. I'm going to change the fill for it to be like that. The other way to do it is a little bit longer. So it, you need to do things individually. So um, the first thing I do is I turn off the ground plane. So I go to the render tab, turn off the ground plane, and then it's just the same. You control P, print. Um, I think it was, yeah. I'm going to overwrite this and I'm also going to do the other one in the same cloth. So the way to do that is you need to create custom with a, a and I'll just do a custom because that works for Rhino 6 as well. So keep that as white and then go self illumination. Select the objects, right click assign to objects. And then I'm going to turn the ground plane back on and you can see that the shade on the ground has now become visible. So control P, print that. I'm going to put that as number four. I've already done this before. And now in Illustrator, I'm going to copy this, control C, control V, open this. Bring these across, create two new layers underneath. Call this object shade. And ground shade. Put the object shade in first. Um, you large icons now. Object shade was number three. Just quickly choose the 128 item there. Done. Let's expand. There we go. Yep. And then we do the ground shade. Same process. Uh, image number four, drag that in. Number 128, done. And so now I'm just going to line this up. see how the corners become a little bit softer that's the price you pay for raster to, ve to vector conversion so just going to tidy this up make that a little bit thinner the, the make 2d object shade I'm going to change this key to like that so select this object press expand and there we go and now I can change this to a slightly different shade cool and Maybe just select these both, put them as multiply node. The last thing we want to do is show you how to put that texture around the object. So go back to Rhino 
and within this custom material I can assign a color so I click this I've already created this grain here so you can see this is like a noise in Photoshop and I've stretched it vertically and that is pretty useful to show directionality but it's also random so it's a 3000 by 3000 square that I've saved into my textures folder in the app data roaming press open and you can see now that it's assigned so I go to custom I've got self illumination on so there's no shading on the on any side and I've got at the moment I've got the mapping set to channel 1 and that means that the sphere looks good and from here I need to turn the ground plane off again because I don't want the ground plane so I press that off control P print overdo number 5 because I've already done this before but now I'm going to do one more layer put that above I'm going to call this texture drag this in and do the image trace again at 128 see what happens ideal that is neat okay if I wanted to and there's too many control points here I can um, make this a bit smaller so firstly let's go expand it's doing its thing there we go and you can see how many control points there are there's lots so um, I can go object path simplify and you can see that it's sort of created made things a little bit more oozy but I think it still looks good and it's made it it will make the file smaller so the last thing I'm going to show you is how I get the patination on the this type of thing so this these ground shade objects I can go I'm going to create a duplicate so a duplicate layer duplicate and then instead of the fill being this I go to swatches I'm going to go to open swatch library patterns basic graphics lines I'll drag this in and I press that there we go we have the pattern on the ground but maybe I want to rotate it maybe I want to make it smaller so yeah, change that. Turn the transform objects off just so it transforms the patterns only. I'm going to put that at maybe 150. Press OK. And I'm going to make it a bit smaller. So transform patterns. Maybe make this 50%. Press OK. Hey, presto. So if I turn that off, we just have the patterns. That's the real advantage of Vector is I would not be able to do that with Raster at all. So, and just to make it look nice, there we go. As you can see, it's combining the Make 2D with outputting some raster images of shade from Rhino to be able to get to this type of result. And I think that this is quite good because it will create a, a nice looking image which is very crisp. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing pressing like and maybe leaving a comment if you th think of this video as being useful or if there's anything else you'd like to see. Thanks.